Hi. Hello. How are you? How's it going? How are you? Good, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. On my phone, because my laptop has some um, audio issues. <laughs> so I hope that's okay. Uh, yes, yeah. it is. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm, let me, as long as you can hear me okay. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine too. Don't worry about the orientation because it, you'll look good no matter. It'll be fine. Uh, okay. I want to start off and just uh, once again apologize for for our last uh, uh, attempt. Uh, I I I, I regret that uh, uh, I didn't I wasn't sure if it was happening and so I missed you and I apologize for that. That's okay. That's totally fine. I'm glad that we're here now. <laughs> well put. And uh, well, I mean, my other regret about that only is that we could have taken a little bit more advantage of the AFI, you know, virtual screening period because I think it's I think I checked the yeah. site. It's ending today. But what what um, why don't we just start before we get into the film a little bit? Just tell me uh, what the uh, say. Don't forget. What is next for She Paradise? What, what, what's coming up? I wish I had a clear answer. I mean, we, we, <laughs> got, into Tribeca, uh, we got into Tribeca, which was very exciting for myself, yeah. for everyone that worked on this film, because it was very much uh, micro budget film. <laughs> um, we shot it guerrilla style in Trinidad and I shot it with friends and we did not necessarily go into it thinking about where it would end up but just having a story and wanting to tell a story that we were excited about um, so you know getting into Tribeca was a, hi a highlight not only for myself but for everyone that worked on the film and having that moment sort of <laughs> um, yeah. not work out because of you know the pandemic was very it was very heartbreaking. Um, so we, we recently premiered with AFI virtually and that was also very exciting. But um, I guess the plan just in the near future is to show at festivals um, and start you know, talking about the film and getting it out into the world. Yeah. Well, maybe this can be a, a, a little part of that trajectory then. But you, <laughs> um, uh, well, you mentioned, you know, you're gonna get a lot of uh, uh, angry people filmmakers writing you letters because or emails because you know you you it sounds like I'm not suggesting for a moment that a, you didn't put a lot of lot of work into your film obviously you did but but that you you know you kind of made it for your own reason people spend millions of dollars on on making films and then you know they they hire producers and they hire strategy producers and uh, to get it into the best festivals and mm -hmm. uh you didn't do any of that. <laughs> uh, no, and I, I mean, I wish I had the millions of dollars that they had, right? <laughs> to well, do all that. Um, I guess, yeah. I, I mean, guess. I guess it just. I guess it just emphasizes that if you have a good story, mm -hmm. that's a, you know, that's an awful big part of it, correct? Yeah, and and I think what really helped us pull this off is that. It was very much a community experience shooting this film. I, you know, I shot a story that is very personal to me because I spent a lot of my teenage years working as a dancer. Um, so the world was a world that I felt very close to and bringing all those elements together, it just felt like a family the entire time we were shooting. Um, so that's what kind of kept us going you know through it even though we didn't have the large structure of you know having a strategist and, and a huge budget I think that kind of community energy around the film is what really kept us going yeah I don't think you should be too occupied by all those other things anyway I think you need to be focused on the creative process and and creating your vision you know so that, I think that's I I think you went the most authentic way possible um you know uh I, so, but you, the, uh, she, she paradise started as a short, right? Yeah, it started as a, a short film, and the short film we shot at a time when the feature length script was already written. Uh, so we sort of worked backwards in the sense that we wrote a feature length film, and then we had to figure out how to get it made. Um, so we shot uh, like a 
pitch um, or a proof of concept um, to sort of get the film out there, start building the audience, and also just to kind of help um, myself and the writer develop the world of the film. Uh, you, you, you shot the film in Trinidad, uh, right, in an in, um, area, well, at least in part, uh, in an area called uh, Port of Spain. I guess certain scenes were shot there, uh, certainly opening, maybe some of the opening sequences. That, uh, but you, uh, and you're, you are from, you grew up in Trinidad and, and, and also in uh, Tobago. Is that, is that the right way to pronounce it? Tobago. Yeah, yeah. Trinidad and uh, Tobago. In, yeah. in the Caribbean. For, yeah. <laughs> and, but you went to film school in, in in New York City. You went to SVA, the School of Visual Arts, correct? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, were these resources available to you when you made *She Paradise*? Were uh, your connections you made, or or uh, maybe crew people that you yeah. met through that experience? Yeah, I, two of the crew members were actually classmates from undergraduate schools, and my DP, my cinematographer. Um, Jackson Lewis. I met him at film school when I was in New York. He shot my thesis film um, just before I graduated and since then I haven't worked with anyone else. I mean the chemistry um, between us has been so natural um, and we have such a great working and collaborative energy between us um, and so that's the go-to cinematographer for me and and yeah and it's just kind of interesting to see how we're both growing together um you know we shot a short film together and now we've just shot a feature film together and as he grows as a cinematographer and as he shoots more I'm also growing and learning as a director so it's nice to sort of have that like upward sort of um momentum with a partner with someone sure um are you in Trinidad now Yes, I'm under a mango tree. <laughs> uh, that's that's nice. Is the uh, uh, is that where you call home currently? Is that? Yeah, I mean, I move back and forth between New York and Trinidad a lot. Um, I'm actually at graduate school right now at Columbia University, but I'm doing everything online because we well, can't uh, we can't congregate. <laughs> um, so okay. I'm just sort of in my bedroom doing a lot of um, classes that way and the borders of Trinidad are somewhat closed so uh, yeah. it's just difficult to move in and out right now um, yes. and it's yeah. well you're probably yeah it's probably better for the moment anyway to uh, yeah to be safer and uh, I don't know I don't are, is, are things okay in Trinidad in that regard are people safe practicing yeah. safe behavior yeah we had a, a moment where we were officially I, we probably had we probably had cases but um, based on what the government was saying we had no cases and the borders were closed um, so there were a few months where no one here was quite living with the reality of what was going on everyone was going to beaches no one was wearing any masks because we, we had no cases I'm sure we did but we had no cases and then um, I think around like the later part of the summer we started getting reported cases and our first cases of community spread um, so now everyone's sort of locked down um, beaches are closed we have to wear masks and and, and right now we're still below the global average but there is there is a risk you know there is community spread so it's something that um, we have to be careful of, but you know, everything's fine for now. Um, yeah. yeah, well, you seem just fine under your mango tree. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, you're in grad school in Columbia, you mentioned, uh, virtually, obviously, but you, uh, I assume film, you're getting a graduate degree yeah. in filmmaking. And yeah. uh, who, who's, who, who are you studying with right now? Because I, I, I have a lot of uh, friends who teach at the Columbia. Oh the film department so I'm just yeah I'm actually taking um writing classes with a screenwriter called Richard Dresser who I'm learning a lot from um Hi, I'm Eric, Hi, Eric uh... I'm taking I writing with Ramin he just um I think okay. he's about to release a film on Netflix and yeah I mean it's it's definitely a program that focuses a lot on story and screenwriting and yes. and that 
been very helpful for me, especially during the lockdown, even though, yes, there's the constraints of not being able to actually, you know, be on set, make a film. Um, sure. I'm sort of using this time of isolation to, to write and, and to work on that. Yeah. Is this your first or second year or? Yeah, it's my first year. Okay. Okay. So, you know, maybe sometime during your program, you'll actually be able to go to Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the early side of things, that's good. Yeah. Well, uh, your, your movie, your feature is called She Paradise, and we didn't really, I should have done a better job. I'll, I'll certainly explain what it's about in, in the, my introduction uh, eventually when. Well, what I was thinking is, I might put this video up just to kind of let people know who you are, but maybe what I could do is when, when the film is ready to premiere and or have its next big opportunity, we mm -hmm. could uh, maybe put on the podcast proper and, um, you know, do another round of promotion for your film. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> so, so uh, it's, it, it, the movie centers on uh, Sparkle, who uh, is this incredibly, carries uh, this, this remarkable find. How did you, uh, her name, and the actress's name is uh, uh, Onessa mm -hmm. Nestor. Yeah. Right, so uh, she's pretty remarkable. I mean, because she she embodies her character so well. I mean, she's this sort of uh, I won't say shy, but she is not uh, as you know initially anyway. She seems to be much more uh, living in her head, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe a little, a little uh, cautious of. Uh, but you could see that she's extremely attractive, or she finds very these women, these young women who are are dancing. Is it Soka? Is that the name of the, the dance mm -hmm. time? Right, they're backup dancers, and they. But it's a. Uh, I, I, I assume it's a. Uh, please jump in and correct me, but maybe it's a. It's a, a one of a, a, a Trinidad. Maybe it's a Caribbean style of a street dance, or is it a? Mm -hmm. Have I got it wrong? Oh no, soca is a genre of music, so it actually. Oh, it's the music itself, not the dance. Yeah, so it actually stems from calypso. Um, so. Calypso had its prime moments, especially in like the 50s and 60s, I think. It oh, was yeah. on the board charts with Harry Belafonte. Um, and, and so that genre of music was actually um, invented or created in Trinidad. And, and so a lot of the Calypsonians are taught, like Lord Kitchener, all, they all have Trini roots, um, but the genre has evolved since then into soca music, which is kind of, a, I guess, a more modern um take of calypso oh yeah. i see okay it's an out i see it's a it's a uh, maybe a child or grandchild of calypso <laughs> yeah um, yeah but the dancing is very physical it's a kind of uh uh very physical involving part like the, the, i guess what i'm trying to say is it, it it's it could be for somebody who's shy or or it might be uh quite a step away from their personality because mm -hmm. it requires dancing with all the parts of your body uh, and um, being completely inside your body. I'm, <laughs> it just appears that way. Yeah, I mean, and I think- A very athletic dance, I might add. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it's something, because I, I mean, I, I, I was raised in Trinidad as a Caribbean person, um, as West Indians, you know, we, dance is just something that is kind of it's like a natural um process you, no one really goes to learn how to wine you know as a kid it's something that you, you the, that yeah you yeah. kind of like assimilate from your friends from the culture around you and so that is how you know whenever we have carnival which is um a big festival that we have once a year you participate from the time you're a child and and so, you know, as you get older, as a teenager, you could start going to FETs, which are large, you know, large scale parties. But Carnival is such a huge part of our culture. It's such a huge um, celebration that we have every year. Um, so, you know, that that dancing to the genre, it's not necessary. I mean, there are classes that people do do give now. There, you know, wine and classes that you could take. Um, and that's something that has happened recently, but it's never been. Um, you know, in the past, a dance form that you necessarily train to do. It's just something that's cultural and, and part yeah, of the, I mean, the place. I yeah. That's true probably for some of the uh, Latin dances as well, that mm -hmm. you grow up with them. You know, everybody, it's just, you know, like a 
whatever samba or whatever <laughs> might be an outgrowth of salsa music or whatever. And it's just, it, you know, it's part of the everyday culture you, you're mm -hmm. experiencing when we go. Um, not sure we had that in my, my, <laughs> my culture. <laughs> which is probably explains why white guys are so uncomfortable dancing by and large or straight guys <laughs> so historically because they could have used that growing up what you experienced yeah yeah if we had it when we were growing up as part of our culture we might not stand there you know like with the overbite <laughs> type problem kind of like <laughs> trump trump with not moving you know like uh, so i think i'm a little bit better but not not tons better you know and what I feel like, what was very, it's a very liberating, and I, yeah. uh, the dancing that's going on in your film, mm -hmm. and I think that Sparkle, who really does start to sparkle once she's either watching the other girls dance or she starts to dance herself, she really mm -hmm. comes to life, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's a way out. It's that kind of story too, right? There's opportunities, maybe being dancing on a video, you get paid well for that. So it was also kind of a way out into the world and she's ambitious. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was important for, so I co-wrote this with Melina and it was important for us that, wrote that those, those girls, parts. these girls sort of awaken something in her that was already there. So it's not that that they're right. changing her or or that, right. that this, this it's energy, dormant. yeah, that it's, this energy or this desire to perform isn't right. already inside the lead. But yeah. these girls sort of awaken that inside of her and, and sort of help her and um, kind of bring that side out. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, how did you find her? Did you, was she uh, just part of a casting call? Yeah, I actually uh, had various ways of approaching casting and Mika was actually cast on Instagram. I sent her uh, a really? direct message and she replied and, and we did an audition. Interestingly enough with, with Mika, her first read was, she was very, very nervous. And I think, you know, the natural intonation is to sort of, okay, this is not going to work. Um, Cause the reading really wasn't, you know, it, it, like she was too nervous to even deliver the lines. And I think at one point I, I just told her, I put the script away, um, you know, do you know the yeah. lines by heart? She knew the lines by heart. And as soon as she put the script away and just said it in her own words, um, you know, right. she brought, I mean, it was like day and night. She brought so much life to that character and she felt exactly like what I imagined Mika to now, be. Now this is the friend, um, right? Sparkles, who yeah. she bonds with. This is the girl that appears to yeah. be homeless or yeah. maybe that's not a, the right word for it, but. Yeah, she's sort of drifting <laughs> um, and staying by and staying by Diamond um, most of the year, and so and so Sparkle actually did audition. She auditioned when we were doing casting calls for the short, and I think we had her based on her picture. We thought she would work well for Mika, but then when I met her in person, um, I I really felt like she would work for Sparkle, and so we had her read for Sparkle instead and. And, and yeah, immediately, I mean, hello? Yeah, so I think we Love lost each other. Yeah. Okay. I had her audition for Sparkle instead and, and the choice to choose her was very easy. I immediately felt like she had um, the right spirit for this character. And so she was cast for the short and then we ended up using her for the feature length film. Um, this was her first time ever acting um, for the last for film. So it was, it was, it was good to um, sort of, as I mentioned earlier with my cinematographer to sort of grow with someone um, because this was my first time directing a feature length film. Uh, this was her first time ever acting. And so, you know, being able to sort of like grow as a director alongside Onessa, she was sort of learning to act and to sort of tell the story through her role and through her character. It just felt like that very supportive and collaborative energy that kept us going. Well, she's a remarkable find. I see, she's, she's obviously, she's a very beautiful and uh, talented woman. She'll, uh, I'm, I'm sure she'll have great success if she sets her mind to it, you know. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, so are you um, tempted while you are in 
you're in Trinidad uh, to pick up the camera and just try to start shooting something because uh, you have some more time. I know you mentioned you were writing for your, your, your going to school, but uh, I'm sure the urge is, it must be there. Yeah, I, I'm, I have, I'm not shooting uh, so much because I'm spending a lot of time writing. But yes, the urge to go out and shoot is, is always there. <laughs> it is. I mean, this uh, Trinidad is a place full of so many stories. And I think it's what, what's exciting is that everything, you know, there's so many underexplored stories uh, for filmmakers out here. And so, you know, that there's that sort of energy and that thirst to want to tell our own stories. And, and, it's, and essentially, I mean, there is, there has been a, a lack of representation in the industry at large. So yeah. I think what's exciting for a lot of filmmakers on the ground is that, you know, we're finally getting a chance to sort of tell our stories, but also like have them get noticed and cross over and, and have people, um, you know, from other parts of the world notice our films and my films, are, our films are actually starting to, to make it into festivals um, in the US. And so that for us, that's really exciting. Um, there's actually one film right now on Netflix that was directed by a Jamaican um, called Sprinter. Um, oh, wow. so, you know, that for us is so unheard of and to, to see that on Netflix and, what, and what, um, what's, it's, what was called, it's called Sprinter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know, I mean, I've been kind of trying to indulge in, in some virtual festivals because, you know, and this this the idea behind what I'm doing here, like with you, is to try to, um, I, I don't know, maybe in my own way, uh, get the word out and help, again, in my own small way. Um, I don't know how much of a dent I'm making, but I just started to realize I may as well use this uh, format here to you know more frequently and and put you know these festivals now which are open i mean the advantage of the festival world right now and screenings in general is that you know any they're no longer uh uh, uh limit, limited by you know geography so you know mm -hmm. uh, and uh i'm noticing how many uh well there's many many more female i mean i know it's been uh a festivals and filmmaking in general has been criticized for the shortage or the, you know, the underrepresentation of women uh, filmmakers, but it's starting, they're starting to be a real significant change as, as it mm -hmm. appears. If these mm -hmm. films get distribution, that'll be great too. So, you yeah. know, right? <laughs> that's, the last, that's the last battle. <laughs> and I know oh, that's on your yeah, mind. Look at them on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, well, but you have your Tribeca Laurel, right? And your AFI Laurel, and no one can take that away from you, Maya. Those are two, <laughs> two uh, very prestigious uh, festivals. Yeah. You know, so it's a good head start. Good for you. You know, yeah, you'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to keep in touch about um, you know the film and and its ongoing uh, success. And so people know how to see it. Um, do we do do we leave anything out? I hope I did justice to the oh, film. I mean, it's... I feel like we got. I feel like we got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I'm glad to meet you. And uh, you too. Um, and now I'm, I'm in the mood for some 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 tropical fruit for some reason. <laughs> Go uh, get mangoes. <laughs> I don't know. The mangoes here are probably. You know, they're probably just not the same as I'm guessing. No, no. <laughs> but you, in season, are they are they available like in season now, or is that already? No, over? they were in season last month. So last month. Not, oh, okay. Yeah, they're not in season right now. All right. Well, there's always the next uh, <laughs> next year, I guess. We have like the apples where I am. I am in New York, but I, I moved. A little north of the city up to where there's all these apple orchards and pumpkins mm. <laughs> like, a little advertisement. yeah we're actually i know both i can't i don't have the privilege of being able to vote but <laughs> seriously if americans need to vote we actually have pumpkins hair growing in our backyard is that right yeah <laughs> what's that 
I didn't know they grew in Trinidad. Are they the yeah. same? They're not as big, right? They must be. Yeah, the the ones that we have in Ayat are huge. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so but but our decision, but the vote here impacts Trinidad and the Caribbean countries, of course. Yeah, of uh, course, of course. <laughs> well, I'll do my bit. I promise, um, <laughs> and I look forward to sometime in the next year or so when we're both in New York City to meeting you, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, get to uh, Morningside Heights sooner than later. <laughs> Thank you. Nice it was great meeting you too. Same here. Okay. Bye. All right, have a good day. Take care now.